Well, all I know is this. I have nothing against the human beings that play the roles of Alexa Bliss and Bray Wyatt. But as a fan, people ask me all the time, if this wasn't your job, what would you watch? Well, I can tell you for a fact that if this were not my job, The Fiend and The Female Fiend, I'd have been done. Done! That and the 24-7 and his horrible booking, I'd done. I would have been done during that period. So no, I would not have been clamoring to stop watching my favorite football game to come back and watch the return of The Fiend. Maybe it'll be better next time. I'm willing to give it a chance. Back in a moment, Observer Live. Back in the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Sempervivi, also WrestlingObserver.com. Guys, remember those bugs on the ring? Mm. Remember when Randy Orton burned down his shack? <laughs> How about that Crucix? That might have been Undertaker. That was stupid, too. And he burst into flames. And then, uh, you know, we always have those yeah, but blokes. Mm-hmm. I got a yeah, butter here. Oh, yeah? But it's about WWE. It's like, because I, I noted during the uh, the break on the chat, you know, they said, uh, you know, wh- how would The Fiend have been if it wasn't for the, the bad storylines? <laughs> Dude, listen, it's not even the storylines, I said. It's the, it's the way that his character worked. It killed every babyface that he feuded with. Every babyface that he feuded with came out worse for wear. Yeah, and so the re- the response here from somebody was, "Well, isn't that Roman Reigns?" Okay, well, as uh, the 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 one smart thing Mike said on this show in the last decade, just because somebody else is doing something stupid, doesn't mean you have to do something stupid. I think that's what you said. Pretty okay, much. it doesn't matter if Roman Reigns' character also kills all the baby faces. That doesn't mean now you need two. Well, I mean, Roman Reigns' character kills a baby. Maybe you should have five. Well, how about we have no more? <laughs> One's plenty, okay? Um, um, Roman Reigns is like the heavyweight champion of the world, too. And Bray Wyatt is a spooky, yeah, this different is a story. dimensional type of character. Yeah, exactly. He's trying I to mean, be at the top of the mountain. Who could possibly beat Roman? Yeah, the, you can say this is both pro wrestling or both sports entertainment, but there are still different ways, you know? Baseball and football are both sports, but you go about them in different ways, and you go about those characters in different ways. And one of the problems with the Bray Wyatt character in the way that it became constructed was it couldn't go away. They didn't want it to go away because it sells merchandise or this or that. Like, it probably would have been better off having a three-month run, and then the evil is killed. And then it comes back again three months, four months, five months later when you have a reason for it to. You can still sell the merchandise. You can still do that stuff. When he was a Jim Jones type of cult of personality character with these minions behind him, that's still a little bit more believable and relatable and think there's a lot more you can do with that. You know, I just saw a clip of when uh, Raw was facing SmackDown. I guess it would have been for Survivor Series, and it was Owens and Jericho, and they were doing the list. And Bray Wyatt was right there. He was in his hat and everything. He had the dumb blue shirt on, but it's like he was still a pro wrestler. And when you went into a different dimension with him, like, that was okay, but, like... It's to some people, it's only going to have so many legs. And to see Randy Orton's face get burned off and they don't sell it. And now this guy's actually literally incinerated. It's like for a lot of people, it's still a, a, something that's way too far over the top. And for the people that really like it, that's cool. But I have a feeling that, like, we'll see what happens this time around. But I think if you dial that back and, and actually plug some evil realism back into the damn thing, it may be a little bit better off. Maddie, Western Australia here, made a wonderful point. The Fiend is an art house film in the wrong environment. Yes. Do you guys remember? You you guys watch uh, Raw Monday? Probably not, but if you do, (laughs) this Seth Rollins bloke, okay? Seth Rollins' character is... So turned the channel irritating. He comes out. I don't know what he's wearing or why. He does that stupid laugh. He's a heel. He's got this music, which the fans sing. But uh, you know those Jim Johnson interviews where he's like, none of this music has anything to do with any of these characters. <laughs> I'm like, why are these people singing? This This song sucks, by the way. 
But anyway, you know why all of this irritating stuff with Seth Rollins, who is an uh, incredible, unbelievable talent and a blowaway babyface? Do you know why I'm suffering through all of this every week? Why? Because of the fiend. Because Seth Rollins was a babyface. And during their feud, the fiend got in the ring mm -hmm. with a spooky mask on. Oh, man, cue and up the red went, gimmick. Uh -huh. And Seth went, ah! and Seth, started, ah! Seth Rollins, babyface Seth Rollins, laid in the corner of the ring by the ropes, and he cried. Like a B-I-T-C-H. That was the end mm. of Seth Rollins as a babyface. It was. Because at the end of the day, and you may all disagree, I don't care, it's my show, why in God's name, as a grown-ass man, would I be scared of a guy in his Halloween costume looking at me? Why in God's name, if I were wrestling Mike, if in the middle of the ring I super kicked him and he took a flat back bump and then did a gymnastics bridge, why in God's name would I be scared? I'd actually first be pretty impressed. I'd be scared. And then I would punt that guy in the face so hard. You wish. But the wrestlers have to be scared that he's doing a bridge. How about when Alexis the Fiend and the heel, the baby face throws her to the ropes and she jumps and sits on the ropes and the announcers go, how creepy. I'm like, she's sitting on the ropes. Can you boot her in the gut and send her outside? This is stupid. So no. This isn't Friday the 13th. This isn't the new Chucky movie. It's a wrestling match. And some dude's out there in a Halloween costume and the red lights are on. And all these baby faces are cowering in fear. Looking like morons. I don't like it. And the other thing, you know, I have said it before. Oh, but The Undertaker, The Undertaker. Dudes, listen. I don't know how old you are. When Undertaker was doing this spooky stuff, it sucks and people hated it. You know when The Undertaker became a legend? The Undertaker became a legend when around uh, 2000, 2001, he kind of tweaked his character a little bit. And uh, he started to go and have great matches. And all of a sudden, like every WrestleMania, he's having like a four and a half, five star match on the show. And, yeah, he still came down to the ring with everything like that. And every now and then there'd be some spookiness. But he wasn't over because he was spooky. He was over because he was there forever. And he ended up stealing the show and creating a WrestleMania streak. That became legendary. Not when Yokozuna rolled him into the casket and then he elevated to heaven. Nobody liked that. No. It sucked. Yeah. But people have weird memories. There's nostalgia. And they, oh, man, when I was a kid, I loved that spooky stuff. I loved when Papa Shango made the warrior barf and goo came out of his head. You know, so we had goo 20 years later because the same guy that wrote that stupid Superstars episode also was writing Ron Smackdown. Yeah, it sucked then and it sucked now. Yeah. Anything Vince's, else? Vince's teddy bear. I hated that one. That's the one I always go back to there. But, uh yeah, you know, when the supernatural became relatable for people, and I know a lot of people hated the booger red version of The Undertaker and everything, but when he actually became a real person, when he went back to The Undertaker character and he started having these matches that Brian's talking about, these legendary WrestleMania matches, people could relate. There's a guy in there. Yes, he's The Undertaker. We want, at this point, to have the the purple light come over and to hear the entrance and to have all of this. And we will accept anything that happens at this point, no matter what the special effect is, because this guy's awesome. This is awesome. This has proven the test of time. And this is, there's a, a, a touch of realness to it. And you don't have that with Bray Wyatt because it is that art house film. It is somebody with their vision that, you know, you don't understand the brilliance of this. And like, even John Waters, who is great and is a Baltimore icon. You mean John legend. Walters of Ring of Honor? No, no. Oh, a different I mean, guy? Okay. I mean John Waters. You know, when it was time to make Hairspray, which was a much different movie than Pink Flamingos, because 
Pink Flamingos was only going to sell to a certain audience. And then he did Hairspray, and he's done a lot since then that people may not realize that he's actually produced because that's the audience, a wider audience that you have to play to. And if your brilliance is only in your mind and it's only to a limited amount of people, we're going to have a repeat of the same thing that happened. It doesn't seem like that's going to be the case because if they do bring him back, Triple H has said he's got his brilliance, but we need to keep him in check. This is going yeah. to be, I guess, his first great Vince moment because Vince has always been the filter. So in this case, when it comes to Bray Wyatt, if they do bring him back and they revitalize all of this stuff, this is going to be the first time I could probably say you can really compare Vince to Triple H when it comes to creative. You've been given the same ball of clay. Let's see how you play with this thing now. You know, guys, do you remember when The Undertaker and Kane feuded and one of them chokeslammed the other into a casket that, that contained the bones of their dead? You guys remember this? It's mm -hmm. horrible. Yeah. Oh, by do the guys, way. Hold on. You guys remember the storyline of Undertaker and Kane and Paul Bearer? I that know. was the worst storyline. The most nonsensical. Do you guys remember... When Paul Bearer was killed because he was buried in oatmeal. Do you remember murdered. this? Murdered. Murdered on, murdered on TV. Do you remember when Edge was Edge kidnapping and Paul Bearer? And, and, and Paul they were Bearer. Going to, yes, and he was like dumping Horrible. him off of ledges. Horrible. And just, yes, disgusting, horrible, and just bad. Bad. But man, he had some great matches at WrestleMania. He did. And the streak truly was legendary. Yes. Because that, at least, was real. All I have is a few questions. Oh, good. My favorite. Is it duplex or suplex? Or is it both? A wrestling move <laughs> where you grab your opponent and throw him backwards through the air is a suplex. A housing complex with two homes built connected is a duplex. Yeah, it's never been duplex, Granny, but you've, you've said this now for 15 okay, years, so we just I, yeah, let, yeah. It, let it go. Yeah. So I thought once and for all, I want to know which it is. So it's duplex and not suplex, right? No, a it's, suplex it's is suplex a suplex and not duplex. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> duplex is a housing development, Granny. Ulysses S. Grant's battle we, scars. We, we definitely read these. Skip forward no, a few pages. No, no, okay, no. Okay, all right, all right, go ahead. We didn't do this one. Okay. Yeah, this person says we did. This person says we did it. I protest. There must be two of them then. <laughs> I protest. He wrote the same one twice. Yeah. I like this one about Grant so much. I'm going to put it in the book twice. I, I'm telling you, I wasn't back this time. Okay, far. fine. Read another one. Yeah, everyone's saying we read these last week, Granny. Big deal. <laughs> Who cares, but everybody? All the, but all the researchers today. Are you reading the book the wrong way? No. Okay. What do you think I am? I don't know. You keep saying you're going back. <laughs> Why would we go back when reading a book? We're supposed to go forward. Maybe what happens, Granny, is you put the bookmark in, and then when you open it to that page, you start reading the ones we already read. Maybe the bookmark should go on the next page. No. Okay. <laughs> what do they say in court? I object. I object. Objection, Your Honor. Yeah, that's right. I didn't read that again. Overruled, Granny. You did. <laughs> All right. Anything else, Granny? You're guilty. <laughs> well. <laughs> go, to, go to jail. Your guilty was the high spot of the week. Oh, you shut I'll... me off. No. Oh, you're right here. Hello? Can you hear me? Hello? There was some weird rumbling going on. Like uh -oh. she, she's unplugging her own cord there. I think you unplugged the cord. I can hear you. you, you can you hear me? Can you hear me? I, I'll message you. I'll message you. I hear you now. Oh, now you do? Yeah, now I hear you. <laughs> <laughs> what happened? <laughs> what happened? <laughs> I don't know. Ah! All right. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.